Hi everyone, this is Arpad from Starpath Academy. And when I was a young boy during the 90s hyperinflation in Romania, I overheard in arguing between my sister and my mother about female sanitary pads. Basically, we didn't have any money left to buy some of these necessary items. I think my aunt put it the best way when she said during communism we didn't have any items to purchase but we had money and after communism during hyperinflation the items were there but we had no money to purchase it with. And by no money she meant the purchasing power of the currency was inflated away where we couldn't afford some of these very basic items. So this left a pretty big mark in me about the importance of these items for your female family members during an economic collapse or hyperinflation like we had one. And uh, some of these items go up in price, um, they shoot up in price immediately once a uh, collapse is happening. So I invited a guest, Marielle, she is from Venezuela to talk about uh, this very specific issue about female sanitary pads. Um, please listen to what she has to say. So in terms of uh, the cost of sanitary items and others, um, I can tell you right now that, you know, it's like I mentioned before, if the government says that this is going to be the price for whatever, then I can tell you right now, you have about, if this is the first time ever, you have about a week before that thing completely disappears. But if it is the second time that they do it, you have about 24 hours before you cannot see that thing again. And then you will have to overpay, overpay the price. And usually um, certain food items and a lot of the sanitary items will be in this list. Um, like I said, in the beginning, there was a time in which for two years straight, we could not find um, sanitary pads like for women or razors and um, quite frankly I, wa I, wa I haven't seen um, shaving cream for about since about five or six years ago you know I haven't seen it it's just there are things that are going to be sanitary but they are not considered like uh, essentials and whatever is not essential will probably disappear because people cannot afford it and companies will not produce them and so you will have to have it imported, which makes, which makes it even more expensive. So, and people will not trade for it because it's just too expensive for the thing that they are doing that something else can do it. So in terms of sanitary items, for example, um, hair conditioner for women. Um, yeah, that, that one is, is, yeah, not, I haven't, there was a time in which finding hair conditioner I mean, it was a luxury and it, it was very, very hard to get. Um, and people will trade for that one, especially women, because it's important. But it's one of those things that, um, you know, you can live without. And um, the sanitary pads, quite frankly, is, is the most um, debated topic because for women, not having sanitary pads can mean um, a living hell. And any woman that have been without sanitary pads during certain, certain times, they will tell you that they will rather starve that no, than not having sanitary pads. And um, people that are, you know, women that are not used to having the pads that are reusable, they will just not get used to that one. And when women are extremely uncomfortable, they will blame men and they will, um, they will put a hell of a lot of emotional pressure with their family members and um, they will not go out. They will be yelling all the time and it's going to be a nightmare in, in terms of all of those things because um, it's not like in the movies. It's not like that at all. And um, in terms of the cost like I said, um, you know, the, all of the suddenly the government decided to leave the prices alone. As soon as the government left the prices alone, um, things uh, about two or three weeks later, things started to appear everywhere. And they were 
okay. Maybe, you know, they were still expensive, but they were kind of affordable. So, for example, um, by the way, the quality of those things, the sanitary pads, I can tell you right now that the quality will be diminished. And if you were only using one brand because it didn't cause any allergy on you or whatever, um, now you might need to change brands because the, the, that brand is probably not going to be doing the same model that they were doing before. And, and um, you know, this is a topic that men will probably not understand very well, but not all sanitary pads are the same. And um, some will give you, um, you know, uh, weird sensations and stuff. And so even if you have sanitary pads, if they are wrong, and they feel itchy or, or they're weird or whatever, um, it's not hell, but it's definitely you being next to hell, you know? So, so you will be very uncomfortable and stuff. But um, so I suggest that um, you try alternative methods if you can find them. But like I said, I mean, I, uh, you know, like I said, we were two years without finding any kind of sanitary pads. And I can tell you right now that just like baby formula and um, diapers and others, um, this one was a very, very, very hot item and you could get anything from anyone to try to um, get that one. And in terms of soaps, um, people learned how to make soaps. And um, also people learned how to make shampoos and they were... Um, people that were making shampoos and others, but I can tell you right now that about one quarter of the people that started uh, companies that were making shampoo, like you started making shampoo in your own house and then you started selling it, um, one fourth of those items were actually giving, leaving people scars. They were also leaving people uh, bold. Uh, burned because they had too many chemicals of, of certain things like the calcic acid and stuff like that. And, um, and so people went kind of natural, meaning that they started learning how to make soap with oil and they were using cookie, cooking oil that was reused in your house. Um, it's very, very useful to know how the hell to make your own soap uh, because if you cannot find soap you know, you need a, um, an alternative to that one. And quite frankly, the alternatives are uh, certain plants and stuff, but they are not good. And um, so the best solution will be to store soaps uh, that are uh, bars, like solid, because the ones that are um, liquid, they, they will not be the same after a while. I'm not going to say that they go bad. They don't go bad. It's just that the texture feels different and you will need more water to try to get it out of your skin. And if you have problems with water, you don't want to spend double or triple or sometimes four times more water to try to get, you know, to try to rinse yourself. So it will be best to do it solid. Um, I don't know what else to tell you about uh, the sanitary part, um, you know, because sanitary is also um, a thing about cost. The cost of a sanitary pad right now, the package of eight is probably around $1.50, $1 something. But that is because, you know, like I said, the government hasn't changed the price for that one. If the government changed the price of that one again or something like that, then it will be about $5, a package of eight. And most women will require three packages per month, per month, average. So that will be $15. You know, keep in mind that the salary of, you know, the monthly salary for anyone, it's roughly about $4, sometimes seven. So basically, you know, you are paying, uh, you're buying sanitary pads, about five dollars and your salary is roughly four so your salary will not be enough to buy you one package of that so you know use that one but right now like i said it's just one dollar and yes you can find some brands um they will not be the, the the same quality as before but at least you can find them you can find soaps you can find uh, a lot of things but if they are considered a luxury, then you, you will probably need to look for them in, in certain places or 
that are very um, elite and stuff like that. So, you know, but in other places you would probably not find them.